Next, we are very delighted to welcome Ms. Haruko Kamei, head of the Human Resource Development of JICA, to present her um, remarks. Now, um, Ms. Kamei, you work in the private sector, also NPO in US, and uh, he started to join uh, the former JICA, and he served in the Nepal Office of uh, Human Development Department, South Asia Development, Gender Equality and Poverty Reduction Promotion and Computer Office, and currently he's, she is the head of the Human Resource Development. The JICA's uh, Cooperation Education and uh, Expedition Food Edge Report is her title. We have Q&A session from uh, three, uh, 30, 25 minutes it's past three o'clock and use Q&A boxes on the uh, Zoom to give us opinion and the uh, questions. Ms. Kamei, please. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my name is ha uh, Kamei from the Human Development Department of uh, JICA, Japan International Cooperation Agency. So uh, concerning Edgepo Japan Symposium, uh, I would like to thank MEXT uh, for allowing me to participate. Now, this is um, my title, International Education Cooperation of JICA and Collaboration with EduPort. Uh, that is what I will be talking about today. So JICA, from the initial launch of EduPort, together with people of MEXT and uh, and uh, universities, NGO, private companies, it, it, uh, relevant to EduPort, we have been collaborating with them to promote international cooperation and from the three uh, presenters, there will be presentations of the actual cases. And I, myself, I'm looking forward to hearing from them as well. So today, uh, these are the points that I'd like to mention, the three points. The first is the overview of JICA. I'd like to explain what kind of organization it is. I'm sure many of you here know about this, but there are some people who may not be all that familiar, so let me give you an overview first. And the second is Edgeport platform. Through that, so the various uh, JICA partnership projects uh, I would like to introduce two today. And lastly, the uh, collaboration experience and also as uh, from my experience of international education cooperation. So for the future uh, possibilities of Edgeport, what we expect, that will be mentioned last. So first, uh, this is an overview of JICA. It looks like something from a textbook. So the Japanese government uh, implements various international cooperation programs. Yeah, so it is called Official Development Assistance, ODA. So we centrally implement this uh, in our organization. So what is well known is the dispatching people from uh, through volunteers. And not only that, as you can see in the box, uh, these are the major schemes, for example, in developing large infrastructure, the funds are, are provided at very low interest rate. The There was someone from the Bangladesh embassy, uh, embassy here as well. In Bangladesh last year, MRT, large railway, just uh, opened. So we provide funds for those kind of projects, uh, uh, finance and investment cooperation. So mainly from basic human needs, infra inclusive infra infrastructure in various ways, for example, school construction. So funds for that will be uh, provided as well in the form of grants and also technical cooperation. So we will be talking about technical cooperation going forward as well. So the knowledge that we have in Japan through people will be uh, relayed to our partner countries so that together we will be able to develop various uh, projects in terms of economic the cooperation is not just ODA, but as you may know, uh, through UNICEF, international organizations, the World Bank, through these organizations, the Japanese governments do provide assistance as well. And also there are uh, activities by NGOs and investment by private companies as well. So the overview of uh, JICA, this is very busy. So if you are interested, uh, please refer to the slides that have been distributed. So our, the mission of our organization is to lead the world with trust. So using the resources we have in Japan, our experience and knowledge to the developing countries who are our partners uh, through them. 
So we will be building trust uh, between Japan and the uh, rest of the world. That is a very important mission for us. So our project business is very broad arranging from the large infrastructure that was mentioned earlier and also the school teachers. What, how should they teach so that uh, this can promote the understanding of children and also grassroots, for example, nutrition? So what would be the types of food that is better for people's health? So through these are broad range activities currently they're being provided. And one major characteristic is that there are about 100 countries where we have offices. Even countries where there are no embassies, there are cases when we have our office. So what I want to say here is that the advantage that we have is that we have a very strong pipeline uh, with the government and policymakers in all, throughout the world. And if it's education, for example, the educational and sports ministry. So I don't know, depending on the country, the uh, education ministry has other aspects as well. So we have a strong pipeline with them as well. So we are connecting people and people. So people to pe people to people network we have as well. That is one of our strengths. And also, how are we carrying out our business our projects? These are Japanese government-led uh, projects. So the policy set by the Japanese uh, uh, government, for example, through ODA, at uh, Minister of Finance, uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs, we have the cooperation volunteers. And there was the new standard uh, for cooperation that has been set last year. So in terms of this uh, development cooperation charter. So what is shown here is a human uh, security. Uh, the Japanese government is focusing on this. So to so realize human security, and then health, nutrition, education. So we need uh, to invest in people, uh, protect people, and also capacity building. So that is shown here. So human security is the pillar based on, based on initiative. Uh, development uh, cooperation is provided. And uh, in terms of human security, and this is uh, human security in the new era, it says, but the concept per se has a history of more than 25 years. And so uh, 1994, UNDP's uh, document was the first. And also in the United Nations, there was a human securities committee as well. and. Our, Sadako Ogata, who was the top of our organization, a High Commission for Refugees, and also uh, Amanotea. So that report came up in 2003. So 20 years have passed since then, uh, since the concept was first initiated. And at JICA, the importance of human security, even after 20 years, especially now, we believe it is uh, even more important because human security, we don't know when that is going to be threatened. That is the current era. And so this threat is multi-layered. So for example, I think last summer it was very hot. And actually until this, until last year I was in Cambodia, but I thought uh, Japan was much, much hotter than Cambodia. So. This is probably strange due to climate change. And uh, there was COVID-19 threat as well. Now, well, two years ago, three years ago, since then, uh, things have changed. But everyone was, may be exposed to a new threat. I think everyone felt that uh, firsthand. Not only that, there's Ukraine, Palestine, Palestine Gaza and also not reported recently, but also in Sudan, Sub-Sahara, and Nigeria and others, there is conflict. So these types of crises, uh, these poly crises, uh, our president, Mr. Tanaka, says that uh, 
This has three concepts, threats posed by physical systems like climate change and threats posed by biological systems like COVID-19, and all, lastly, Ukraine's and also U.S.-China conflicts, and also fragmentation within various countries, so, so threats from social systems. So all of these are now uh, 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 threatening us. And also, from that viewpoint, human security is extremely important, and that is part of our mission. So later on, we'll be talking about uh, educational development as well. And the SDGs, uh, unlike the MDGs in the past, Japan is also a part of this. So everyone in the globe will be targeting this to achieve this. And uh, we need to make continuous efforts. Now, human security. So if we apply this to educational uh, development, I think this is very important from two perspectives. One is, so each individual needs to develop their capabilities and talent and also live, continue to live with dignity. So that is a human rights perspective. And also, now that we have poly crisis, there are planetary threats that are enlarging. So how can we overcome all of this? From that perspective, education is extremely important. So based on those at JICA, what are we doing in terms of uh, educational development? Let me briefly explain. So the SDGs, with these SDGs goals, within JICA, we have global agenda by a domain. There are four Ps, and these are used from other international organizations as well, peace, planet, prosperity, and people, of which within people, education is uh, a focal point. This is circled in red. So health and uh, social security, not only that, at the same time, education is also a very important focus. So in terms of education, then what are the challenges? That is shown on the following page. Uh, there are many numbers here, but there are many children who cannot go to school in the world still. And as a result of that, potentially, they cannot learn. So 670 million children cannot learn. This is a huge challenge as well, and we still require investment. And the last one, 242 one. If you look at the Japanese uh, schools, you may not be able to uh, believe this, but this is the ratio between teachers and, the, and children. I'm not uh, saying that these numbers per se are very important, but this environment does not allow people uh, to learn. So there is the issue of quality. So how quality education, so how can we uh, work on this is extremely important. And based on this, JICA's global, within JICA's global agenda, within education, we have the policies that we have. These are some of the objectives. So as I mentioned, human security, from that perspective, the importance of education is cited and also what we, the need for assistance for education, our uh, objectives are similar, so I will not explain in detail here. So what exactly are we going to be doing? And there are four uh, areas for assistance or cooperation. One is improving learning through the development of textbooks and learning materials. Even a layperson, if you go to a developing country and look at their textbooks, so we're surprised. So because we're uh, very familiar with the systematic way of education in Japan, and the volunteers also say the same. So we need to resolve these uh, so that we can urge and encourage children to learn. That is one area. And the other is community-wide collaboration, so collaboration between communities and schools. So in schools, nothing is available. So how can quality be raised? So in order to do so, there has to be an environment where community and schools can collaborate fully. That is the second. And the third is uh, leaving no one behind, for example, improving education for leaving no one behind, uh, girls, refugees. So how education can provide it uh, to these people? These three are for basic education. The last one is for higher education. That is also extremely important. And so strengthening universities is also one pillar.
And so, sorry, I talked too long about what Jaika is doing. So, Port and ourselves at Jaika, I would like to show you two uh, partnership examples. The one is, one is in Papua New Guinea. So, the photo shown here, the children are looking at textbooks. This has been developed through Japanese assistance. So, the Japanese uh, private textbook companies know how it was used. And this is an elementary school in Papua New Guinea. This textbook is actually being used. And what kind of assistance uh, did we provide? Uh, there are many project names, uh, many institutional names written here. But the major point here is that in Japan, we have various resources and capabilities. These have all been mobilized uh, to improve textbooks in Papua New Guinea and to, develop and to deliver this. And not only delivering textbooks, but the teachers, based on these textbooks, need to be able to instruct. So instruction guides also have been developed at the same time. And also digitalized infrastructure is prepared so that any everyone can access to these materials. And in technical cooperation project of JICA, a first grader to the third grader math textbook was uh, developed. And on top of such project, being international organization, GPE, Global Partnership for Education, which was established as a foundation by uh, the World Bank. The resources and the funds are tapped into fully uh, so that we are able to print the textbook to distribute to the st students. And also on right hand side in the purple dots, uh, JICA has provided that uh, funding for the third graders to beyond. So for the first and the second grader, the textbook company uh, have uh, published that uh, uh, with the funding of GPE, uh, Papua New Guinea uh, Education um, Department have uh, consigned and, and they have uh, distributed the textbook. And uh, on left up side, uh, next, Edupport Japan, um, the what Edupport program covers in the total picture, uh, the teacher's manuals, um, the digitalization of a teacher's manual was the part that the um, Edupport have played a part. And uh, after uh, making it digital, also MIC and the University of Electro Communication have provided a tablets of about uh, 5,200 tablets. Uh, they have installed uh, such a digital textbook and uh, so that everyone can access to these materials. And what I want to emphasize is that not everything can be undertaken by JICA. All the relevant uh, international partnership, the Japanese government, MIC, MEXT, and uh, the uh, universities are cooperating with us in materializing such a cooperation. Now, um, Africans example, this is uh, near the school of Marawi. Uh, we have taken this photo. And the uh, reason that I present on this partnership project is that with the local universities uh, know-how, um, trying to improve the capability of teachers uh, to teach uh, to the students. And uh, we will touch upon uh, about the advantage of the Japanese uh, education. Fukui Prefecture is providing the Fukui unique uh, education style, Fukui style education it provided, which means that uh, with the cooperation of a, a house, school, and uh, family, uh, they are providing a very good education. And the quality of education is actually a top uh, in uh, the country. And the Fukui University has been having such know-how. And the JICA has been going through uh, some training related to a particular topic uh, from a developing countries, uh, inviting all the government's people and tried to invite the government officials to take a first look at how teachers are teaching in Japanese school. And uh, University of Fukui have um, made uh, the edge board program and uh, inviting all the relevant um, experts and tried to do the follow-up. So there is a unique efforts going on and NGOs and the local communities uh, are doing a grassroots activities that is conducted uh, under JICA grassroots projects and tried to help support the first line of uh, activities in the local area. As a result of that, Malawi's uh, textbook text uh, excuse me, education, teaching uh, program is uh, examined and uh, we were able to improve the uh, teaching methods for the students. So these two examples are going to be presented. And lastly, this is expectations of, of the edge port and collaboration possibilities. Mm -hmm. 
There are three points, in my opinion, and uh, all these sentences describe what I want to say. Now, SDG Goal 4 is uh, the quality education for all. In order to attain SDG Goal 4, we need to provide uh, solutions. So we are um, serving as the solution provider being Edgeport. And the second, Edgeport is use, uh, providing opportunities for information sharing and networking for experts. Uh, we are building partnership and uh, we are playing our role for that uh, effort. And the third is uh, Edgeport is trying to make um, Japanese education more internationalized. So our experiences overseas through assistance could be returned back to the Japanese education. And just to go through one by one, uh, our role as a solution provider, I'd like to elaborate on this point. Now, uh, because of my profession, I visit many developing countries and uh, Japanese education is uh, drawing a lot of attention around the world. And this photo shows uh, when I visited Vietnam in December of last year, uh, uh, of a Japanese style that was a part of the grassroots activities of uh, uh, JICA. And uh, now uh, the Vietnam uh, public uh, kindergarten is implementing this education methods and uh, now uh, that uh, kindergarten a founder have uh, spread that methods in the nearby communities and uh, a teacher is actually reading the uh, picture book to the students and there's uh, not a pra common practice in uh, Vietnam so far. And uh, unlike the Western education, uh, Japan started to uh, modernize in about 150 years ago. And uh, 1872, the school system was put in place and the education system is uh, since then modernized. As a result of that, within the short period of time, well, quality education is provided for the whole nation, and that is actually a miracle in the government policy point of view. Such a question is raised by a lot of developing countries. It wasn't easy for Japan either. There were teacher systems and many all-out efforts was made, but the, at least uh, our experience is drawing attention around the world. Also, as we mentioned in the Fukui Prefecture, uh, equalized and uh, very high quality education over the nation. And when I get involved in education, what happened? happens is that the education gap between large cities versus a local uh, farming area uh, is uh, always uh, the problem. And uh, there's academic score differences, uh, significant differences that is observed in many countries. Yet in Japan uh, or across nation, a certain quality level of uh, education is provided and everyone has access to it and uh, everyone is achieving certain accomplishment is actually uh, fantastic. And the whole person education, Tokkatsu, uh, the presentation is going to be made afterwards. The person has to be well balanced, for example, in the general classrooms and also cleaning and so forth. So uh, many people are um, paying attention to tokatsu as well. And the Kosan Technical College is actually um, another thing. Kosan seems to be um, considered as an English terminology nowadays. And uh, sometimes, well, uh, in Japan, we don't quite understand Kosan. Uh, the advanced level of a high technical skill school is something that I usually use in Japanese, and that is an uh, engineer school or technical college. And uh, however, um, in English, uh, developing countries are actually understand Kosan and they are willing to work on Kosan now. And uh, there is a Malaysia education, high year education uh, minister says that. Uh, uh, well, that's uh, really um, passionate about implementing causing system in the country. The reason is that uh, very advanced scientific te and technological capability is something uh, drawing attention. Where um, not many people agree with me. However, it seems that technical capability of Japan is still receiving a high level of attention. So think about attaining the SDG goal four from a developing country's point of view, history, policy, practices, and lessons learned need to be shared more and also know-how, uh, guidance, uh, pedagogy um, are all interesting and in what way we can provide so that the goal four could be attained. And there are so many things that Japan can offer going forward. Second point regarding partnership that I'd like to talk about. 
Now, um, how JICA is considering the partnership at this moment, and uh, I'd like to elaborate on what is the environment around ODA. This is a relatively sad uh, chart. ODA a uh, reserves in Japan was actually peaked in 1990s and uh, current level is as half as what it used to be and uh, we're proud to be the top donors around the world but in terms of the volume we no longer a top uh, provider on the other hand the role that ODA need to play is changing as well as you can see from this chart what types of funds be flowing to the developing countries on the left? And the gray at the top part is representing ODA. Back in 1980s, there was quite substantial volume existed. And it is reducing gradually. And in recent years, private funds are performing more. And uh, ESG investment is widely uh, discussed in the market, as you probably are aware of. Impact investment is happening as well, so it doesn't have to be always ODA funds to try to implement some assistance to developing countries and explain the expectations for developing countries. When I do a questionnaire survey among the developing countries by JICA, the private sector partnership needs to be facilitated, and there is a strong demand from developing countries. Because of this reason, um, the another expectation for Edge Board is that they try to collaborate with many actors. So uh, we want Edge Board to provide the opportunity so that uh, many players will be able to cooperate. University, NGO, other uh, local communities, and we want uh, the broader range of stakeholders to join these efforts at JICA. Academia, consultants, civil society, academia, or the private companies. We are working to create a platform, which is called a co education cooperation platform. We want to further enhance co cooperation. Last year, the uh, education cooperation platform uh, was highlighted for the four dates uh, last year, and the 7,500 people joined as a part of this program. Edgeport hosted some symposium as a side event, and uh, such an effort uh, is expected to continue in the future. Lastly, I'd like to talk about how to return the uh, experience of education cooperation outside of Japan, bringing back to Japan. Now, when you talk about developing countries, they are not actually the, simply a receiver of, of assistance. It is not one way anymore. I've been um, having a tour to uh, Cambodia until um, March of last year, and there's a clear leapfrog, for example, in the urban transport, the tuku-tuku, the three wheel. Uh, could be called upon with app in a second and also the e-payment electric payment is prevalent that i didn't need to uh, touch the physical money and uh, my kid that i that uh, my kid go along with me came back to japan uh, with me and said that uh, japan is so inconvenient so in some part uh, the uh, developing partners are actually much advanced and there are so many learnings that we can enjoy from other countries so be edgeport um, and collaboration parts, uh, partners when they go to local um, site and there are so many learnings and try to share their experience to educational setting so that children can learn a lot. Now, the volunteers are quite active in local market where they tried to link Japan and developing countries and also try to work in enhancing international education and understanding. And I hope that such similar efforts will happen for EduBoard. And through such efforts, ultimately, more so than ever, uh, being a practitioner of uh, uh, international development, the whole world need to be achieving the SDG goal number four, that is the first uh, desire. And the second, as a result of that, um, the reputation for Jap Japanese education will become higher and uh, will lead to the success of the Japanese business, Japanese education business uh, on a global basis. Well, JICA have a public-private uh, partnership uh, scheme and uh, uh, some of the 
Some of the examples, like Papua New Guinea, have、uh, used that scheme quite a lot. So, private entities, when they are willing to do something in developing countries, we provide some scheme. And uh, the uh, Com the company officials who、uh, got involved in that、uh, project is also present here. So, if you could approach、uh, that person to get more information. And lastly, Japanese ed education has to be changed. And everybody is aware、uh, vaguely. And in fact, there are so many things that need to be improved. And it's not just in English education, but on a global basis. Well, competency is required on a global basis. And from that point of view, international p r o c e s s、uh, need to be shared so that we can share more. Also,、uh, there are many countries in the developing world, policies, practices. There are some tips as well. So,、um, for the port portion, we would like to bring back、uh, to Japan so that we can、uh, enhance Japanese education and the further development of the educational business in Japan. Thank you very much. And、uh, thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much.